Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. There he goes into that drugstore. He's stepping on the scales. Weight, 239 pounds. Fortune, danger. Who is it? The Fat Man. In this business of solving crimes, the detective runs into two types of criminals. The old-time pro and the first offender. The old-timer with his record, fingerprints, and well-known pattern of procedure is always at a disadvantage. And by hard work and the help of a stool pigeon or so, he is usually caught. Your amateur, on the other hand, becomes the detective's $64 question. He has no record, no pattern, and is unknown in the underworld. That makes it real tough, because you've got to work in the dark. And believe me, that's not fun, especially when you're dealing with a murderer. And now, here's the fat man in Murder Sends a Christmas Card. It must have been about 5.30 on a cold, snowy afternoon when I saw this girl come out of Kelly's pool hall on Carter Street. She wasn't exactly what you'd call beautiful, but she was nice-looking. Slim, neatly dressed, and certainly not the type of girl who hangs out in pool halls. She stood on the sidewalk for a second, as if undecided where to go, and then started across the street. Maybe she didn't hear the car coming, or maybe she didn't care. The driver tried to stop, but the streets were slick. I took four running steps, and I dived. Oh. It was a good tackle, and the snow eased our fall and helped us slide clear just as the car skidded by. Oh, didn't hear it. Didn't I... your mother ever tell you to look up and down before you cross the street? You're a lucky lady. Oh, yes. Yes, thank you. I I must have been thinking of something else. I, I just didn't hear the car. Here, let me help you up. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I think so. Oh, oh, my ankle. Is it sprained? No, I don't really think so. I must have turned it. I, I'll be all right. Thank you very much. I... Oh. Now, take it easy. You're not going to get very far on that ankle. No, please, I I must get home. I, I left my little boy with a neighbor. I must get back. Okay, I'll take you home. Here, lean on my arm. No, no, please, I, I live a long way from here. Sam goes to that pool room because it's near where he works. Uh-huh, but uh, let me get a cab and take you home. No, no, I... Uh, Sam wouldn't like you. So... Who's Sam, your little boy? No, my husband. That's why I came out. I, I, I was looking for him. Is that why you went in the pool room? Uh, yes, I, I thought he might be inside. Sometimes he does go there. Oh, I, I'm so worried. Why, is he out of work? No, he, he has a job, not a very good one, but he is working. Then why did you think he'd be in the pool room? Well, this is his day off, but... Oh, oh that isn't the reason that I... <laughs> You're not making much sense. You didn't get that worried look just because your husband might be playing pool with the boys on his day off. Now, don't misunderstand, but I'm just trying to be helpful. I suppose I'm being silly, but I was worried. I, I, I was afraid... Afraid of, of what? No, it's nothing. I have no right to burden you with my trouble. Maybe talking will make it easier. 
Oh, you are very kind. My name's Myra Davis. Well, my husband's job doesn't pay much, just enough for us to get along on, and well, Sam gets discouraged. He feels he can give us the things that we need. That's always tough, but it's really nothing to worry so about. Well, that isn't why I'm so worried. This morning it all came to a head. Sam lost his temper, we had an argument, and he left. He said he was going out to get some money. A funny look on his face when he went out, and when he came back this afternoon, I, I got worried. I, I, I was afraid. That he might get in trouble. Yes, I, I thought he might do something wrong. I. Oh, don't you see? Sure, sure, I see. But while we're talking, I'm going to take you home. And who knows? Maybe I can help Sam get a better job. Hey, taxi! The Davises lived nearly two miles from the neighborhood of the pool hall. The apartment wasn't exactly what you'd call classy, but it was neat and clean. Just as we opened the door, the telephone rang. Hello? Hello. Hello. They hung up. Oh, well, maybe it was Sam. Maybe... Maybe he found a better job. Maybe. I hope so. But why would he call? Why wouldn't he come home and tell me? Now, don't get upset again. You'd better go get your little boy. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Are you sure your ankle's okay now? Yes, it's much better now. In that case, I'll be running along. Thank you so much, Mr. Runyon. I do hope you can help, Sam. Well, I'll do all I can. In the meantime, you cheer up. Take this card of mine. Give it to Sam and tell him to drop in and see me tomorrow. Maybe I can help him. Oh, thank you so much. Skip it, sweetheart. I'm an old boy scout. This is my good deed for today. There wasn't any reason why I should have been worrying about this guy, Sam Davis, and his wife, Myra. He was probably a nice young fella, down in his luck and bitter. Maybe he was headed for trouble because of it, but... Well, it wasn't any of my business. Besides, it was time for dinner, and I was hungry. It was cold and snowy outside, but I couldn't get them out of my mind. Maybe I was a sap, but... I got a cab and rode all the way back to Kelly's bar and pool room. It was snowing harder than ever when I walked in. Yeah, what'll it be, mister? Give me a beer. By the way, do you know a fellow named Sam Davis? Yeah, sure I know Sam. Has he been in here this afternoon? You a friend of his? Yeah. Here you are. Yeah, Sam was in a little while ago. How long ago? Oh, well, let's see. It was after his wife was here looking for him. Uh, she come in about an hour and a half ago, but Sam wasn't here then. He come in soon after she left. I remember because I gave him the message that she was looking for him. Oh, then he went home. No. He went to the phone booth over there to call her. Said he'd got himself a job tonight, so he'd be late getting home. I thought he had a job. He has, but... Uh, He's going to pick up a little Christmas money by driving a truck or something for the guys he was with. He said it'd pay good. Uh, but them guys didn't look exactly like trucking magnets to me, though. How do you mean? Oh, nothing except, uh... Well, since you're a friend of Sam's, just between you and I, uh, they didn't look like Sam's type. Uh, know what I mean? Yeah, I was afraid of that. You didn't know the guys he was with. No, but uh, I get the idea Sam owed one of them some money, uh, they sat back there and talked for a while. I think they was arguing with Sam. Finally, they get up and all of them left. How long ago was that? Oh, not long. Uh, maybe five minutes before you come in. Okay, thanks. See you again. Merry Christmas. I left the pool room and walked east toward the subway six blocks away. It was getting colder. The street was one of those extra-wide warehouse line streets, dark, and deserted except for a small cigar store a few feet ahead of me. There was a telephone booth inside. I went in and dialed Davis's number. Hello? 
Uh, this is Brad Runyon, Mrs. Davis. Has Sam come home yet? Oh, no. No, he hasn't, Mr. Runyon. I, I do wish he would. Well, now, don't worry. I had an idea for Sam, but I'll tell him tomorrow. Oh, you're very kind. And don't worry. Sam will probably be along in a little while. Goodbye now. I went back out into the dark, snow-covered street and tried to forget about Sam Davis. I was four long blocks from the subway when a truck skidded around the corner a block ahead and rolled to a stop in front of a warehouse on the far side of the street. The door of the truck opened and three men got out. They seemed to be in a hurry. One of the men unlocked a small door beside the big rolling one used for trucks and the three went inside. I walked ten yards farther towards the subway and the rolling door of the warehouse went up with a bang. I saw the flash of a gun in the black open pit of the warehouse. I jumped sideways into a doorway and pressed against the wall. Two men ran suddenly out of the warehouse. One was bareheaded and the other wore a cap. They both had guns in their hands. A third staggered behind them and toppled headlong on the snow-covered walk. The guy wearing the cap stopped when his pal fell to the walk. But the first man ran to the truck and drove off. The guy with the cap on tried to make the truck, but it was too late. Just then, a cop came running down the street and a guy still on his feet started to run. He forgot how slippery the street was, but it saved his life. His feet slid out from under him, just as the cop fired and the bullet hit a window. Maybe he thought he'd hit the gunman. Anyway, he waited a split second too long before trying to fire again. The man in the cap turned over while he was still sliding along in the snow. He only fired once. The cop's arm flew up over his head. He fell forward on his face. I grabbed my gun and moved quickly out into the street, but the man in the cap was already nearing the corner of the next block. It was too dark and I missed. By the time I reached the corner, he was gone. I tried to follow his footprints in the snow, but he'd gone into the street and I lost him in the slush. So I went back to the warehouse. Evidently, nobody else had heard the shots. The cop and the third gunner were still where they'd fallen. There was a police call box next to the small door of the warehouse. I opened it and asked Lieutenant McKenzie of police headquarters. Lieutenant McKenzie speaking. This is Runyon, Mac. Ah, hello, Brad. I thought this call was from one of my men. The cop who ought to be making this call is lying in the gutter across the street. What's happened? A holdup that went sour. There's a gunman on the sidewalk and a watchman inside, both carrying lead. Two of the stick-up boys got away. You'd better get down here with an ambulance and a prowl car. Where are you? Colby Street, about three blocks from the river. Okay. I closed the call box. My eyes traveled back along the sidewalk where the man in the cap had slipped in the snow and done his fancy shooting. Something bright and shiny caught my eye. It was lying on the sidewalk where the snow had been scraped away by the man's fall. I bent over and picked it up. It was a chromium-plated cigarette lighter. And it obviously had fallen from the man's pocket when he went down. I struck a match and looked closer at it. There was engraving on the back that said, To Sam with love from Myra. I put the lighter in my pocket, then crossed the street. Hugging the shadows and walking fast, I went back to the cigar store two blocks away. The proprietor dozed behind the counter and a radio was playing. That's why he hadn't heard the shooting. I looked at my response. Twenty minutes of eight. Less than ten minutes had passed since I'd left the telephone booth. I closed the booth door and dialed Sam Davis's number for the second time that night. Hello? This is Brad Runyon again, Mrs. Davis. Oh, it's all right now, Mr. Runyon. All right? Yes, Sam came home. There wasn't anything to worry about at all. He, he thought that he might have a job tonight, but he turned it down and came home. He turned it down? Yes. I talked to you less than ten minutes ago, Mrs. Davis. Sam hadn't come in then. Oh, no, no, I know that. He came in right after I talked to you. Put him on the phone a minute. I want to talk with him. Oh, he's not here now. Where is he? You mean he came in ten minutes ago and has left again? Yes. Why, what is it, Mr. Runyon? What's wrong? Did he see where he was going? No. He had a phone call that seemed to upset him, and... When I told him about you, how you promised to get him a better job, he's, he seemed to feel better. He put his cap on. Now, wait a minute. Did you say cap? 
Well, yes, Sam always wears a cap. He told me not to worry that he had to settle something that he'd be back again in a little while. Then he left there just a minute ago. Well, he just got out of the door when your call came. I see. Well, what's wrong, Mr. Runyon? Tell me the truth, Mrs. Davis. It's important. The truth? But, but I am telling you the truth. Sam didn't come home, did he? You got a phone call from him five minutes ago. No, no, he didn't call. He was here. He's only just left. He called and he told you to say he'd been there. No, no, he was here. I swear he was. What is it? What's happened? I'm sorry, Mrs. Davis, but there's been a murder. What? Oh, no, no. The man who did the shooting was wearing a cap when he dropped a cigarette lighter with the engraving to Sam with love from Myra on it. You gave Sam that lighter, didn't you? Oh, yes. Yes, but he was here, I tell you. He couldn't have been there. Your apartment is two miles from here. Stepped out of the cigar store, two prowl cars and an ambulance stood in front of the warehouse. Four cops stood around in the glare of a searchlight. I should have gone up and joined them, but I didn't. Somehow, I wasn't quite sure. There was the lighter, the man in the cap, Myra's scared, flustered voice. It should have added up, but somehow it didn't. Maybe it was because I didn't want it to. I headed back to Kelly's pool room. As I walked, I brought out Davis's lighter and looked at it. I realized I was holding more than just a lighter in my hand. I was holding a man's life and a woman's happiness. That's a lot to hold in your hands. I quit thinking about it and remember that I was a licensed detective. As I entered Kelly's, the bartender glanced up and nodded. I took a seat where I could watch the door and also the game of pool. The clock above the bar said a quarter to eight. The door to the street opened and a man wearing a cap came in. He was young, not more than 25 or 6. Slim, about 5 feet 10, neatly dressed and rather good looking. He looked round the room as if he was searching for somebody. Then he reached in his pocket and took out a pack of cigarettes. From force of habit, his hand reached toward the pocket for a match or lighter. Then stopped as if he remembered. I knew it was Sam Davis. He turned to the bartender and walked toward him. I took the lighter from my pocket and followed him across the floor. Got a match, Joe? Oh, hello, Sam. Sure. Here you are, keep him. Thanks. Uh, never mind the match, Sam. I'll light it for you. Huh? Here you are. Why, thanks. Uh... Where did you get that light? I thought you might be interested. Who are you? Never mind that. I want to talk to you. Talk to me? What about? Is there a room around here, Joe, where we can have a private talk? Yeah, right back there beyond the tables. It's the boss's office, but he ain't in tonight. Nobody with any brains will be working tonight. I ain't got no brains. Come on, Sam. It ain't locked. Just go right in. Okay. Okay, mister. What's the pitch? Sit down. Who are you, and where did you get that lighter? I found the lighter where you dropped it tonight. Where I dropped it? I didn't drop it. It's no good, Sam. The cop died. The cop died? Hey, what are you talking about? 
Where were you at 7.30 tonight? I was home. I can prove it by my wife. I've already talked to your wife. She can't prove anything. But she saw me. She can tell you. She's your wife, Sam. She loves you. You shouldn't have let her down like that. Listen, you got to believe me. I don't know who you are or what you're talking about. You, You said a cop died. I don't know nothing about it. I... I didn't go with him. I swear I didn't. So you didn't go with him, eh? What what I mean is I I don't... That doesn't sound like you don't know anything about it. Who are you? Are you a cop? I'm Brad Runyon. The fat man? That's right. Myra told me about you just a little while ago. When you called her on the phone? I didn't call her. I went home. I left there about 25 minutes ago. Why did you go out again so soon, then? I... Well, I, I, I know it'll sound screwy. It all sounds screwy, but there was something I had to attend to, something I had to explain. Something like shooting a cop? No, 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 no. I tell you, I, I didn't shoot anybody. Now, listen to me. you got to believe me. you you, you got to tell me that lighter of mine, where did it come from? I saw the stick up tonight. I was standing in a doorway across the street. The man who shot the cop was wearing a cap like yours. He was your size, and he dropped this lighter when he slipped in the snow. It wasn't me. I swear it wasn't, Runyon. I didn't even know that... Keep talking. I'd like to believe you, Sam. I liked your wife. I heard about that kid of yours. Now listen, Runyon, I don't know what your angle is in this or why you're interested, but it looks like I'm in a jam. A big jam. Now, look, I'll, I'll come clean with you if, if if you'll help me. Keep talking. Well, the job I've got's no good, see? I don't make any dough. It, it's hardly enough to get along. Well, I, I watched the bills pile up and Christmas was coming. Other guys give their wife and kids nice presents. I couldn't. I know all that. What happened tonight? Well, there were some guys. I met them a couple of days ago. Got in a pool game with them, one of them. I thought I'd win a little money, but instead I lost. I couldn't pay, so I gave this guy my lighter. You've got to do better than that, Sam. But it's the truth. That was two days ago. You said something about going with them tonight. I'm coming to that. Now, you've got to believe this. This afternoon, I ran into them again. They they said that they, they had a job I could do. What was the job? I was driving a truck for them. They offered me a hundred bucks. That's a lot of money for driving a truck. Well, not for this kind of driving, and I needed the money. But I've never been in trouble, so I, I backed out. I went home instead. About five minutes after I got home, a call came from one of the guys. He told me to meet him here right away, so I left and came back. It's not so good, Sam. It's true, I tell you, all of it. You don't believe it, do you? Can you prove you went home, Sam? I mean by anybody else other than your wife. Why, why no, I, I, I didn't see anybody. But I did go home, I swear it, Runyon. Hey, what are you going to do? Keep sitting down, Sam, this gun's loaded. Now wait, Runyon, who are you calling? Please. No, no, don't do it, please, don't you see? Shut I... up. Get me Lieutenant McKenzie. Tell him Brad Runyon is calling. Now, give me a break. I, I know it looks bad, but there must be some way I can prove I'm telling the truth. That's, that's the way guys get railroaded, don't you see? All I... I can see, Sam, is that there's been a murder. Maybe you were railroaded. Hello. Hello, Mac. Never mind where I've been. I'm in Kelly's pool hall on the corner of Carter and Calvi Street, and I think I've got something for you in connection with the killing of the cop tonight. I'll explain when you get here, so hurry. You're not going to railroad me, not if I... (laughs) That was a mistake, Sam. I picked Sam up and propped him in a chair. There was a slight cut on the side of his mouth where my fist had connected. Otherwise, he was okay. Something had fallen out of his pocket. A small white card. I bent over, picked the card up, and looked at it. It read, Brad Runyon, Private Investigator. 
It was the same card I'd given his wife when I took her home. He had been home. I looked at my watch. Mackenzie wouldn't waste any time. Sam Davis was headed for the chair unless I acted fast. They'd never believe the story of the card. I slipped it in my pocket. There was a water cooler in the corner. I filled a paper cup and threw it in Sam's face. Come on, Sam. Come on, wake up. Uh, uh, what, what happened? I hit you. Come on, get up. Oh, I, I told you the truth, Runyon, I swear it, I... Skip it, skip it. Now listen to me, Sam. We haven't got much time. Nobody's gonna railroad you. What do you mean? You just Let called... me talk. We've got to act fast. The cops will be here any minute. Yeah, but wait a second. I don't understand. I said, you... listen. If you love that wife and kid of yours, you'll do exactly what I tell you. Understand? Why did you... Never mind that. Now hit me. Hit you? That's what I said. Hit me as hard as you can right here on the jaw. Then open that window back there and wait for me to come to. And don't leave here. Whatever you do, stay. Now come on and hit me. But I don't get it. I'm not joking. Listen, Sam, so help me. If you don't do what I tell you, I'll slug you again. Now hit me. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh. He was good. The fist exploded in my face and I went out like a light. I don't know how long I was unconscious, and at first I couldn't remember where I was when I started snapping out of it. The back of my head ached, and my jaw felt like a flat iron had hit it. Gradually, a blurred face began making sense in front of my eyes. It was Mackenzie. Brad. Brad, are you okay? Oh, hello, Mac. Whoa, yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Oh, don't worry, Brad. I got him. He was still here when I came in. You got him? Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, there he is over there with the handcuffs on. Hmm? There. So he's in on the hold-up, huh? Oh, hold it, Mac. That's not the guy. Huh? Hey, what are you talking about? He was standing here right over you when I came in. I said he's not the murderer. But who is? Well, I guess he got away after slugging me. Maybe he went out through the window back there. Ah, you must be slipping, Brad. It couldn't be that you're getting soft, could it? What about this guy here? Who's he? Oh, he's a friend of mine named Sam Davis. He was outside and must have come in to help when he heard the row. I guess he got slugged, too. Look at his jaw. Yeah. By golly, the mark on his jaw is almost good enough to be one of yours, Brad. Yeah. So you know this kid, huh? Yeah, he's a truck driver. Works for the Hinkle Company. Take the cuffs off him, Mac. And by the way, Sam, don't forget to drop in my office. I think I can fix you up with a better job. I'll be there. And thanks a lot for everything. Scabbard. Come on, Mac. I can't get over you letting that guy slug you and get away. Don't worry about it. My friend Sam Davis and I will get him and the rest of the gang. Hey, what's going on? It's okay. Go on back to your game. Well, it turned out to be a nice night after all, Mac. Yeah, it's pretty cold, but it stopped snowing. Well, I gotta get back to headquarters. I'll walk along with you. Hey, Brad, I don't get it. This is the first time in all the years I've known you that you ever let anybody clip you and get away with it. Somebody's going to pay for it. I'll give you those guys for Christmas presents. Well, that sounds good, but how? With a card, Mac. A card? What are you talking Listen. about? Listen. Hear that? Sure, Christmas bells. But what about this card? What kind of a card? Let's call it a Christmas card, Mac. My own. 
And the best one I ever gave in my life. I spend my life getting into trouble and getting out of it. But at the same time, I generally manage to get some other people in and out of trouble, too. Be seeing you again. So long. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello, it is Ryan, and I was on a flight the other day playing one of my favorite social spin slot games on chumbacasino.com. I looked over the person sitting next to me, and you know what they were doing? They were also playing Chumba Casino. Coincidence? I think not. Everybody's loving having fun with it. Chumba Casino is home to hundreds of casino style games that you can play for free anytime, anywhere even at 30,000 feet. So sign up now at chumbacasino.com to claim your free welcome bonus. That's chumbacasino.com and live the chumba life. No purchase necessary. BGW. Void. we prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.